So um, I will just begin with a few words about me. Um, my name is Emine. Um, for several years, I have been uh, deeply engaged with Caucasian and in the European languages, and particularly with Ossetic. Last year, I successfully completed my PhD in linguistics, focusing on the, to put it short, on the analysis of definiteness in modern Ossetic. And currently, I'm affiliated with Goethe University. So Ossetic is considered to be the only remaining descendant of the Northeast Iranian Sarmatian uh, dialects and languages, which were once um, spoken throughout um, the Pontic um, Caspian regions and um, the North Caucasus. It is um, widely accepted that uh, the Ossetians are descendants from the Skuta Sarmatian tribe or the tribal confederation of the Alans, um, who left their traces um, of their language in the toponymics of the Pontocaspian steppes. So um, nowadays, um, Ossetic is mainly spoken in the central Caucasus region in the north as well as the south of the Caucasus mountains where it is surrounded by languages from different language families, such as um, Northwest Caucasian, Northeast Caucasian languages, as well as South Caucasian languages, but also Turkic languages um, and Slavic languages, such as Russian, the lingua franca of the region. In accordance with the speaker's self-designations, Iran and Digoron, um, Ossetic is divided into two dialects, two varieties, Digor Ossetic and Iran Ossetic. Um, Digor and Iran, they differ uh, phonetically, lexically, and partly morphologically. And each of these two varieties have their own um, regional variations, which in turn are often categorized as a sub dialect. Um, both my parents are native speakers. They are from one of the last Ossetian villages in um, Anatolia, Turkey, and are from the Ossetian diaspora in Turkey. Um, the diaspora was formed following a migration um, of the people of the Northern Caucasus during the latter half of the 19th century. So um, as a result, I was raised in an environment where I said it was spoken. And once I realized that the language is in fact endangered and not being passed on, I decided to work on the language to somehow help with the preservation. So that's that. Thank you for both of you. Thank you. Kudos to Emine for doing that great job for like prolonging the life of one of the uh, Iranian languages. So yeah, that's really valuable. So thank you to you, Bowder, that uh, you made this uh, platform available to our endangered languages. And yeah, appreciate it, thank you. So I'm a native speaker of Russian language. Uh, that is one of the familiar languages, uh, which are like uh, Eastern Iranian languages. There are nowadays uh, seven more remain familiar languages uh, which are not extinct yet, but still all of them are endangered and they've, and they've got few thousands uh, speakers. So Russian it belongs to northern familiar languages and uh, it's really close to, uh, to other um, languages which also included to that group, especially to Shogni. Nowadays, uh, Russian is uh, people who speak that language that are divided in, into country, two countries, and they live along Panj River, which is which served as a border between Tajikistan and Afghanistan. So, Russian people in Tajikistan they use Cyrillic for writing that language, and in Afghanistan they use uh, Persian alphabet for for writing Russian language. Regarding me, I am myself electrical engineer. Uh, I'm from Tajikistan part, Russian people from Tajikistan. Right now I'm living in, in Poland, but I'm just interested in, in languages, especially in er Iranian languages. Thank you so much. Thanks to both of you for being a part of this and for the elaborate explanation, because this is really helpful. Uh, so I just want to explain what we have planned for this video. Uh, there will be several short sentences. Once you read the sentence, uh, you can both kind of try to think like if you can pick out certain words and figure out the sentence if you need help if you need tips just kind of ask each other and 
help each other out and see how it works. So the first sentence in Vigor Aesthetic is Tua Rai Gong Kana. Uh, can, you, can you repeat it again? Tua Rai Gong Kana. The last word, I guess, it was uh, to do, the verb to do. Correct, and, yes. Uh, oh. Uh, that, that is, ah, now I got it, yeah. That is do. Uh, Correct, yeah. Door is a do. Door, uh, yeah, in my language also. The verb. Raigon kana. Uh, open the door, right? Very good. Yes, uh, that's correct. Yeah, literally, make open the door, yeah. Okay. Khor uh, az abre nechtu. Could you repeat it, please, word by word? So, word by word. Uh, here we go. Khor az abre nechtu. So, the first word, khor, reminds me of um, the sun and ascetic it's also khor what was the last word please the 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 last word is nichtig it's from verb nichtig do but yeah mm -hmm. here it comes mm -hmm. nichtig and the word before that it has a it had a cluster with b r right could you yeah. what was could you repeat the whole sentence please yeah the 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 third word is a uh, uh, noun, it's uh, abre, and mm -hmm. overall it will be khor as abre nichtig. Abre is very similar to um, ascetic um, avrah, which is one of the words for cloud. So um, since it is sun and cloud, I, I would guess that it was something like the sun came out of the clouds or the sun looked out of the clouds or something like that. Exactly, exactly, yeah. That is the verb, means went out, yeah. So the sun went out from, from the cloud, exactly. So in ascetic, there um, is a very common word, like the more common word for cloud that I use is nira. Um, so therefore, I would say mm -hmm. But if we use the cognates, it would be very similar. So But in this case, so in Rushani, we had the words, uh, the verb in final position, and in ascetic, we have it in seconds. So the second ascetic sentence is as matsawun. As Hazaram Tsaun. Correct. Uh, so, as is a preposition, uh, it's a pronoun, first single, first person. So, it's for me. So, it is, I, I got the whole uh, uh, sentence. So, as Hazaram Tsaun, right? You said, right? Tsaun. Yeah. Yeah. So, it means uh, I, I'm going home. Very I'm right. Home. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So in Russian, it would be as the shot sound. Oh, as shot the sound, which is like a little bit similar. The first and the third uh, sentence words are really similar. And yeah, so the home part is different. But you can guess it because mm -hmm. in, per in Persian and in some Pamiro languages, let's say in Wahi and uh, and Ishkashimi, they also say Khon, which is close to Khazar. So yeah, Takal as Khor Roch Tafst. Takal as Takal, please. Yeah. So I will. I will go. Uh, Slowly. So, takal as horroch tafst. As horroch. Ah, roch is like ruchs, uh, roch, rochs maybe, which is light. Is exactly. that the sunlight? So, horroch yeah. is like hori rochs, which would be the sunlight. And the last word, please. 
Tafst. It's a verb. Which is the verb, right? Okay, yeah. Tafst. Um, but yeah, it's a word uh, from, it is from the so, noun stone. Mm -hmm. So there is a word in Digor which is Tafsun, Tafsui, which is like hit. Yeah, exactly. But, oh, really? Yeah, so yeah. sunlight hits. Hit by the sunlight, you are hit by the sunlight. Takal, is that the second yeah, person? person? Oh. So Kal uh, is a head. Ah. So your okay, head Kal. is overheated somehow, or yeah, mm -hmm. from the sunlight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The third authentic sentence is Manan mayes, tu vukhwari amayo ansuwar. Yeah, so uh, can you repeat it once more slowly and I will go like one by one? Mananma, yes. Uva, Hwarya, Ama, Yo, Ansuvar. Okay. So it, uh, it literally means uh, I have two sisters and, and one brother. Mm hmm. So yeah, that's correct. The Pamir version also uh, sounds very, very exactly. Uh, I mean, similar, not exactly, but very similar, which will be like Munan Yast Val Yachat Yevrod. So here you can see that like most words are kind of cognates from the same root. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, except Hori and Osatic is closer to Persian, Hoha. Mm -hmm. uh, while in Pamir it's Yach, just Yach. Mm -hmm. And Ansuar will be Vrod in Pamir, mm -hmm. in Russian. So in Osatic we also have Arvada. We have Ansuar um, and Arvada. Ansuar is the um, brother first degree, and Arvada is someone close to you, related. Starting from the uh, second degree, mm -hmm. um, whereas "huari," um, which I use in this sentence, is um, in fact "huara," but the final "e" was caused by the numeral "duwa." So, in Ossetic, um, numerals higher than two uh, require a genitive case. So, the next Russian sentence would be. Mumzim is stone, garn with. One more time, please. Uh, Mumzim is stone, garn with. Mumzim is stone, garn? Garn with. Yeah. 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 Garn, garn with. It reminds me a bit of um, rar, rar, which means warm. And in Iran ascetic, it would be karm. Yes, exactly. That is. In ascetic, we do not use a uh, stand for um, the season. So winter, for instance, would be zumak. And I guess uh, the same in, in uh, Digo, right? In the same in ascetic, zim, zimak, which is really zumak. Close. zumak. Correct, yes. So the, the last word is a, is a verb, which then makes like the whole word, the whole sentence. So mum is a stone garn with. Will be. Which, the winter yeah. is turning warm or something like that. But they... yeah, yeah, it's, it's really close. Yeah. So it would be this winter was. Warm. Uh -huh. Okay, so okay. So which is mm, mm -hmm. So the fourth authentic sentence, yes, it's number four, is Suvalanta Warzunta Samatalon of Zak. Uh so the last word I, I guess it was language. Correct. And uh, can can you repeat the rest and a little bit slowly, please? Suvalanta warzonsa samatalon 
avzak. Two months alone. Mm. It reminds me. Two months alone. No. Take the uh, first syllable. What does the first syllable remind you of? Uh, say it, uh, can you can you repeat once more? Uh, the word matalon, the first Mat syllable. Matalon. Ours. Mat. Mat mother. That's right. Mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and... matalon, uh, it will be kind of uh, mother tongue. So matalon Correct. Is Matalun of Zag is a compound. It's it means mother tongue, correct? Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm right now mostly focused on varzons. Eh? Mm -hmm. mm, it's not verb uh, to to know, right? It is a verb, mm -hmm. but it does not mean to know. Mm -hmm. To know would be zonun. Zon horizontal. Okay. And this one is varzon. Okay, so maybe um, if I tell you what the first word is, it's a noun, maybe you can guess the verb. So the first word, suvalanta, means children. Suvalon, a child. Suvalanta, the children. Okay. Suvalanta, varzanon. Varzunsa. Varzunsa. So children learning their mother tongue. Almost. So it means the children love their language, their mother tongue. So warzun means to love. To love. To, to love. love. Love, yes. Love, okay. Oh, it was it was really difficult for me, <laughs> this one. What, what is the word for love in uh, Rushani? In Rushani, the uh, word love is a zhivjah. Mm -hmm. Which is which which is noun, and to love when it makes it uh, a verb, it will be uh, So, mm. but the Kenan Zhuj Homod Zev would be in Russian in the same sentence. Mm -hmm. This will be a little bit similar to the sentence uh, Amine just said. So, it says, Are Pomerai boyat chosev vezont. Zont is like to know, maybe? Yeah, vezont mm -hmm. is a to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. zonto. Zont. So. Could you repeat the sentence, please? Ar pomerai boyat chosev vezont. Ar pomerai. Pomerai is a is uh, literally Pamiri. Uh -huh. Ah, ah, okay. Pamiri. Okay. I would just suggest you mostly to to focus on the three last words because they are they are well uh, a little bit more well known to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the last three words was they were like Ho Zev Vezont. Ah, so ho and zef are separate are words. Yeah, they're, they're separate words, yeah. Is ho a reflexive pronoun? Meaning like yeah. my? Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. And zef, zef. Ah, so zef, is that the language? So a yes, zar, yeah. zef, a zef. Okay, so zef, zef. All right, that makes sense now. So, ho zef vezont is my, to know my language, or know my language, or his, her language. Pamiri um, Boyez. Is the Pamiri people know their language, but no, Boyez is not. You said there's a second yeah, word. You're, you're, you're almost done. Except you're, that you're like 90% there. <laughs> yeah. Think of Boyez as like a. Um, a command or instruction. I don't want to love their language. 
no, sh shall know. <laughs> Should, shall know, know, shall know. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I would yeah. would laugh with the other sentence. Okay, yeah. They shall know their language. Every, yeah. Okay. Every family should know uh, his language. Mm. Mm. I see. Okay. All right. So, Ahmed, I will repeat this sentence two times, or let's make it three times because it's really long, and maybe you will you can take that opportunity to pick up one or another word. So let's get started. Now the same mark, Anushi Karon, Turki Zahabal, thus am I in Sayay Fulder, the Goron, am I Yeron, Ravi Ate, Archibon, by Zade, Arta Ravi, Yo di Goron Rau, am I Dua, Yeron Ravi. So one more time. Now the same mark, Anushi Karon. Turki Zanchabal, das ama yinsa yay fulder, igoron ama yiron ravi atay, achibon paizaday arta ravi, yo igoron rau ama duwa yiron ravi. These are in fact two sentences. Therefore, I would suggest to maybe start with the first one to analyze it together and see if there is, there should be a couple of words that you might maybe guess. Let's see. So, so there were some words which I, well, they were obvious. Turkish, Iran, and Digoron. And another word I, I picked up, it was today. Uh, yes, both, it was in the uh, second nowadays, sentence. Yes. Nowadays, Very good. Like Achibon by Zade Artagavi. Yo, the Goron Rau, a Madua, Yeron Ravi. Aha. There's words like one and two. So, very correct. Yeah. Because the counting is actually very close to Rushani also. So, in, in Turkey, uh, in well, Turkey was in the first in the first sentence, in the first part, and the second part was like the first you you speak Digor, and the second you speak uh, Iron. Um, you are correct to assume that it is about Digor and Iron in Turkey, but it's not the language. So uh, it's not about Digor or Iron as a language or dialect, but um, it does in fact. Uh, have to do with the diaspora with an Anatolian outside. As, as so, the people, the community. So think about yes. it. Yes. So question, is is the word uh, Ravi is a verb for speaking? Rau is a noun. And um, it's. I will just tell you what it means because then you will have like three more words. It, it appears three times, no, four times in the whole sentence. Rau is village. Mm -hmm. So I will read the whole part again, okay? The whole sentence. Okay, okay. Now the Saimak Anushi Karon Turki Zanchabal Das Ama Yin Sayay Fulder Igoron Ama Yiron Ravi Ate Achibon Paisade Arta Ravi Yo Digoron Rau Ama Duva Yiron Ravi. Maybe, um, Bahadur, if it's okay, I would just pick out a couple of words which are very um, nice cognates, and maybe that way it would be easier for Ahmed. For sure, to absolutely. Yes, yes. So, Ahmed, you are correct with guessing um, yo digoron rau, meaning one digor village. Ama is the conjunction, meaning and. And you had duwa yiron ravi, meaning two yiron uh, villages. Yes. So if we say arta ravi, you should awesome. be also able to analyze these two words. Oh, arta. Okay, it's third. Three, 
Yes, there are no ordinals. These are all cardinal numbers. So three villages. Mm. So nowadays, the, nowadays in Turkey, there's three le, uh, three villages remained. Uh, two Digor, uh, one Digor village and two Iron villages. Very correct. Yes, uh, this yeah. is the second part, okay. and you translated it correctly, word for word. Yeah, yeah. it was it was a little bit tough. Tough one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The first part is a bit. Yeah, tricky. So the, yeah. So the first I... part. Sorry to interrupt. And no. I, I just wanted to say this... something quick for the first part. So now think of it this way: like this is talking about today nowadays. So now with the first one, you're going back in time. So kind of use that as a hint. Yeah. Very good hint. <laughs> so we have the um location in the timeline, which consists of three words. We have. Know the same mark, which is the first word, Anushi mm -hmm. and Karon. We said that Karon means like the end. Um, now the same mark consists of two numerals, which of which one you should be easy, which should be easy for you to guess. No, the same mark. No, no, the same mark. No, this, uh, okay. It will be 90 homes. Mm, 90. Not the homes. No, mm. the same mark is the cardinal. There is, in fact, a cardinal, uh, an ordinal. Yeah, okay. So no, the same mark. You are correct to assume that it's 19, but Nin it's 19. 19th century. So the number is Das Ama Yin Sei. Das Ten and Insay. 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 Eleven. It will be mm. ten and one. It's twenty. Twenty. So okay. It's a vigesimal system, meaning that you add ten and twenty, meaning that it's thirty. Thus, a my insay means thirty. It was really, really tricky. I must admit. Was, yeah. So thirty in in a in ascetic will be ten plus twenty. Um. It is. There's also the possibility to say ten, twenty, thirty, but mm -hmm. um, I am more used to the bigesimal system because in the diaspora, Anatolian Ossetians usually speak with. I use the system of 10 plus 20 or 20 plus 20 and so on. Oh, that's very interesting. But at the same time, tough. So yeah. I can read the authentic uh -huh. sentence first and then read the translation. Sure. Um, no, the same mark, Anushi Karon, Turki Zalhabal, das Amayin Saye, Fulder Digoron, Amayiron Ravi Atte, Achibon by Zade, Arta Ravi, Yeo Digoron Rau, Amaduva Yiron Ravi, meaning by the end of the 19th century, there were over 30 Digor and Iran villages on Turkish soil. Nowadays, three villages remain. One Digor village and two Iran villages. Oh. Yeah, now I see. So we're, you were very close. Yeah. Uh, you did a very good job. So my my last sentence is uh, uh, Archa, Arche, Arche Hodoi. And that's not that long. <laughs> I mean, I realized. Uh, don't, don't expect for more, for more words. <laughs> I was writing as fast as possible. <laughs> so don't worry, I, I will repeat it once more. And, and that is not that long. So, Arche Hodon, Arway Zorf Darun. Mm. Ah, it's a uh, Huda, it's Hutsau, it's God, right? Yeah, exactly. That is God. Okay, Hodoi. It also, mm. uh, originates from the reflected Ho. Mm. Because in and what... languages, there was no word for Hodoi, there was Bach. Also, mm. in old Persian, which is city Baghdad, is right now came from, like from old Persian Bach. 
and the same in in our languages in Pamir language there was Bach but not, uh, it, it changed to the word Hodoi from the reflecting reflecting mm -hmm. Ho. you were right okay and R no is that no it's not a negation I guess it's uh, mm -hmm. the terminal also kind of showing the place or uh, direction or kind of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Arche Chodoy are way. Way is a different word. And right. there is a cognate in, in a in a digor also. So right. the same for Zork, there's a, a cognate. So you may find it easier to guess from the cognates, I guess. Mm. Okay. So far, we only were able to analyze Mkhozoi um, and Ar as some sort of determiner. Mm -hmm. ah. Why is the pronoun? Wait. Is it third person? Yep. Singular? Yeah. yeah. Woi. Okay, because I was thinking of Woi. Woi yeah, Woi is ex existing in Digorosatic, meaning either that, like some sort of demonstrative pronoun, but also for the third person, like there's this um, different distances that can be expressed by the third person, singular, um, someone who's exactly. here, Both I, and someone who, as well. who's far away, we. Ah, so it's the same in Russian. Yeah, well. Both ah, of cool. them exist in that. Mm -hmm. As you express so it, it is. now, it is almost the same mm -hmm. in Russian. Within Rushani, there's some small villages has which has got their own dialect. They they said as a zord. It's a it's a noun. Mm. Zord, zord. Ah, zarda. Okay, it's the heart, of course. Yeah. 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 Zard. Okay. I. Okay, I misheard it, but now it's. So we have um, who got he heart Darun. Darun puts me off like it's too similar to the Digor word. Um, Dar is... let, let me let me give you one hint uh, well, because Darun uh, is tricks uh, Emine a lot, so it would be really nice to make it clear. This is this word is uh, kind of uh, also preposition, or we can say conjugation. It's it means Inside. Inside. Ah, yeah. okay. So God is inside his heart. But yeah. who? But what would be Arche in this case? His uh, Arche no. means uh, everybody. Let's say everybody. Uh, everybody's. So God is in everybody's heart. Yeah. So literally, yeah, it's like, yeah, you got it. So it will mm -hmm. be like everybody has got his, uh, has got the gold inside his mm. heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. A very poetic sentence indeed. So my impression is after having all these sentences and these listening exercises that it was easier for you, Ahmed, to recognize the cognates and the sentences, to analyze them easier than uh, I did, because I feel like I had many difficulties and I used many of your um, hints to guess it correctly. So um, that's think, also very interesting. In, in, I think the reason for that is maybe, and I could be wrong, uh, because Ahmed has uh, a very fluent level of not just uh, uh, Roshani, but also another Iranian language uh, that can sometimes be very helpful, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because some of some of the words, uh, you know, a cognate between Ossetic and Persian and, and Pamir languages, they all sound different, but at times, like maybe the Persian word is closer to Ossetic, but sometimes it's closer to the Pamir, you know, so when you know two or three more languages which are related, uh, it becomes easier to pick up some cognates. And mm -hmm. obviously that helps you a lot if you are learning the other language as well. Mm -hmm. 
in that case, I would be also curious about how you felt about it. So you said that Ahmed speaks several Iranian languages, modern Iranian languages, and um, you, Bahadar, to my knowledge, you said that you only speak Persian as an Iranian language. Is that yeah, correct? That's right. So how was it for you? You heard Rushani, you heard Osetic. Uh, for me, you the, the Rushani sentences seemed uh, more simple sometimes. And I wouldn't use the word simple, but like, for example, the last sentence, Darun, uh, you know, we use that word in Persian for inside, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, when I hear uh, words like this, then I can kind of like piece it together easier, right? But then that that also varies, right? Because like sometimes you would say something in Ascetic and it's very different in the Pamir languages, but it's closer to Persian, so. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a, like the sentence for sister, khwar, it's the same in Persian, but totally different family. The same like for uh, rain and snow, they're nearly the same, similar in Persian and Ossetic, but for us it's totally different. Yeah. Uh, so it uh, actually Persian helps me a lot to guess from Ossetic. Mm -hmm. uh, the same Russian helps me a lot. In addition, I Rushani, so I have more advantage. So, yeah, you're right. Thank you very much, Pahadwar, for this opportunity. It was a very interesting experience indeed. So, um, before Ahmed contacted me to do some small project on our languages, I must admit that I did not have much knowledge on the Pamir languages. I did encounter them in some grammatical words, um, which I um, works, not words, and some grammatical works um, where I've seen the examples and while looking at those examples, they usually have like this interlinearization, they are glossed, you can see what which word means and the grammatic of that word, and I would always look at it and I would think, hmm, interesting. Mm, and in some cases, I was able to see the resemblance, but this hearing exercise is a whole new level. It's a whole new um, experience, I must admit, and it was indeed very fun. Um, I would like to also thank you, Bahadur, for sh uh, for for um, sharing your experience um, with us, like how you felt hearing our languages. And since you also mentioned um, the cultures and the languages, how important they are, how um, important it is to mm -hmm. save them. But I would love to tell everyone who speaks a language, a heritage language, to pass that language on so that these languages stay alive and are not being lost. So Absolutely. That would be my last word. Thank you so much. And I completely agree with you, uh, especially when it comes to endangered languages. I always encourage uh, people to please pass those languages to your children, especially when you are living in the diaspora, like you're moving around the world, wherever you live, the traditions, the culture, the language. I really do encourage everyone to please continue passing it on to your children. Indeed, I, I totally agree with both of you. Every language, whether it's small or like huge in number of speakers, it carries a certain culture and mm -hmm. long history behind it. So if, if you go behind the words which contains the language, you can see the history of that language, which is uh, how it evolved and through which historical process it underwent. So that's really important, uh, of course, to preserve them. So in this term, I totally agree with you, especially for us who speak the endangered languages, uh, which has got like few, uh, but day by day, let's say, uh, Russian language is uh, the speakers of Russian language, they, day by day, they not increasing, but they're decreasing. So uh, yeah. in this case, it makes sense. So I really appreciate uh, you, Bahodur, for giving us the platform to kind of make a, a, a kind of our um, contribution to for, for our language uh, preserve um, well to preserve them and also i appreciate uh, amina for uh, making this uh, uh, this video this uh, event to happen so i really appreciate it Mm -hmm. And thank you once more. And that's all. That's all from my side. Absolutely. No, my pleasure. Thank you so much.
and uh, I, you know, that completely resonates with how I feel. And uh, I, I, I completely agree when it comes to languages like this. I hope a video such as this and uh, all the other information that I try to share does help to uh, bring more awareness, at least, to languages which are less known and uh, are endangered. So thank you so much once again. This was really wonderful. And, uh, you know, I hope the people who are watching uh, enjoyed it as well. And we'll definitely be in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. See you. Bye-bye.